Hello everyone and you are welcome to the fourth session of our lecture series on vector fields. So far we've looked at graphing vector fields, we've looked at a, a, a special type of vector field called the gradient field or the conservative vector field. We came across a keyword called potential function which is defined by equation 1. If I can find a gradient of that potential function which is equal to the vector field, then my field is conserved or it's a gradient field. And so what are we looking at in this session? We are going to take what we call the line integrals. So I have it as Li for short. Line integrals. What is this about? So if you look at my slide 2 and figure 1, there are two different um, pictures there. One is a definite integral over a function. So if I have an x, y plane and I draw this scape, I can find the area under the scape as the definite integral of the function and the small change in x. But if I have a curve, don't forget all this while we are looking at curves and surfaces. If I have a curve in a surface, then my definite integral is going to be the function of that curve then the small change in the curve. So I'm not going to use AB here. I'm simply going to integral over C. This C is a curve. So the functional of the C and the small change in the curve. So the whole idea of line integrals is integrating over a curve. Then there are two types of line integrals. There are two types of line integrals. The line integral, so Li, it can be a scalar line integral or a vector line integral. Now I'll take you through the difference between these two. But they have a common term. The common term is that we are, they are both taking integration over a curve C. This curve is defined by some parameters, so we have it as parameterized curve C is defined as some RT. And then we also have the function defined, but under scalar, the function is given as a scalar function. And then under vector, the function is defined as a vector field. So this is the differences at the functional point but the curves are defined as c it is defined by parameterized form as rt but the functions are different so i want to say the integrand in place of function i can say the integrand integrand of functions under the integral sign the fourth point is that if we want to evaluate the line integrals for both of this it is just the integral c of f of whatever parameters you have then the small change in my parameter so instead of small change you know what small change means it is dr dot dr dr is the same as small change in r so there's a standard representation for evaluations of line integral now let's do take examples under scalar. So let me take example one. You know how to differentiate. Sorry, you know how to evaluate line integral. So evaluation of line integral. Before I do an example, let me still continue with the differences. Now under scalar functions, my dr is given as the small the norm of the distance. And the vector fields, my dr is just the difference, so the small change. So let me just have it as y prime of t, just this. And how do we define the norm? The norm is given as the square root of something squared. So if my parameter is defined as x and then y, it means that the norm of my derivative here is given as square root of x prime square plus y prime square because we're looking at the derivative norm 
that is another difference with how the DRs are defined. So you take note of that. So let me take an example now. I've already defined all these terms here. I've already defined what equation 1 and equation 2 means if you are dealing with scalars. So let me take an example on a scalar. There are some information you must retrieve. First, what is your function given in the question? The function is 2x. What is your curve given? It is defined as some x of t and then y of t equated to t on 2 and then t squared. What is the interval of your curve? It is given as t is in 0 to 6. This, are, this is what I need. Now, based on this function value, I know I'm looking at a scalar line integral. So it means that the integral by curve of this is given as integral by curve f of rt times the norm dt. So let's quickly do a substitution. This is going to be 0 to 6. 2. It is parameterized at the curve r of t. means that you must substitute for x using what? t on 2. And then the norms. So square root of x prime. If I differentiate this, x prime is going to give me half. y prime is going to give me 2t. So I have half square plus 2t all square dt. Evaluating further, this is a simple integration. Um, I'm going to get, let me see what I have here to save some time. Okay. You realize that 2 cancels this 2. I'm going to get t times the square root of 1 over 4 plus 4t squared dt. This is a simple evaluation. If we should work this integral out, um, you are supposed to get 144.36. So please work it out. In order to integrate this, you can expand. And then you are good to go. Let's take example 2. How do I know it is a vector integral or a scalar integral? So let me go to a new page. In example 2, what are the informations here? It says a function is a density, so my function is given as a density function, which is defined as 2y. My curve is parameterized as some 2 cos t, and then t, and 2 sine t. It means it's given as x of t, y at t, and then z at t. This is a three-dimensional definition and then the interval for my curve is given as 0 to 6 pi these are the informations I need based on this I know it is a scalar because it's not defined as a vector you know the definition for a vector so when we get there we'll know so how do I find the work done on this curve so the work done of this is given as f with a parameterized curve and then the norm of it, the t, because it's a scalar. So 0 to 6 pi, my f is 2y. y is given as t in the parameterized form times the square root. If I differentiate x, so x prime is going to give me negative 2 sine t y prime is going to give me 1 and then z prime is going to give me 2 cos t and so you do the substitutions I want to see the final answer did I work it out um, no in this time I didn't work it out so you know what to do so this is going to give me negative 2 sine t all square plus 1 square 
plus 2 cos t all squared. The derivatives of this. But you can simply know that this is going to give me 4 sine square t plus 1 plus 4 cos square t dt. You know by the trig identity, the sine square plus a cos square is equal to 1. So this will give me 0 to 6 by 2t. If I have 4 out, sine square cos square gives me 1. So you can give me 4 plus 1 dt. This 1 remains. If I substitute 4 out, I'm going to have this. It's equal to 4 times 1. So that's going to give you the square root of 5. So 0 to 6 by 2t times the square root of 5 dt. And that's what you have to simply evaluate. Alright. You know you can have the constant out and say evaluating of 0 to 6 by t dt. Simple to do. Okay. Now let's take examples under vector field or vector integrals. How do I know, so example 3, how do I know I'm looking at a vector integral or a scalar integral? Now for the vector integral, we've already defined it as, let me, sorry for scrolling up here. So these are differences. One is a norm, one is just the derivative. So I can quickly take example 3 now. So let's take this. You want to find the work. Now what is the function given? I always want to extract the information out. The function given, the key word says is a vector field big F is equal to negative yx. The representation here should let you know this is a vector field. The representation here tells you is a vector field. This is the same as writing as yi plus xj. Okay. What is my curve defined? It is defined as some cos t and then some t. Is there interval given? No. The interval is given as 0 to pi. So it says find the work done along a semicircle. The interval is given as t in 0 to pi, semicircle. You know, circles are in radians. And hence, the work done along the curve will be given as 0 to pi, f of rt, dotting my r prime. It is no more a norm because there is a vector. So 0 to pi, negative y, x, dotting the derivatives here. If I differentiate cos, I'm going to get minus sine t. If I differentiate sine, I'm getting cos t, dt. But I'm not done. I have to find the functional values at y and x. So this 0 to pi, y is giving us cos sine t, so negative sine t x is cos t dotting these parameters if i'm dotting this two sine and sine gives me positive sine squared t plus if i'm dotting cos and cos i'm going to get cos square t dt this is the same as one so simply integrating dt as simple as that you know what dot means you add okay so that's a simple equation one sorry example one let's take example two here so that's example four what is the function given the function given is a 
y z x y x z now based on this representation you know it is not a scalar it is a vector field therefore you know what to do with your r is a curve given yes it is given as t square t and then t to the power 4 so this is the same as x at t y at t and then z at t is an interval given yes it is given as 0 to 1 now because it's a vector field the work done here will simply be 0 to 1 the vector field at the parameterized curve dotting the derivative not the norm norms are for scalars so I have 0 to 1 y z y is t z is t to the power 4 comma x is given as t square y is given as t x z x is given as t square times t to the power 4 please you take your time with the substitutions this is dotting if i differentiate t square i'm going to get 2t if I differentiate t, I'm getting 1. If I differentiate t to the power 4, that's 4t four cubed. Then you dot this once. So this is equal to 0 to 1. You know this is the same as t5, t3, t6, dotting 2t, 1, and then 4t cubed, dt. If I simplify further, I have 0 to 1. This is going to be t to the power 6 plus t cubed plus 4t to the power 9 dt. And you can simply integrate this one. I'm not sure I have a final answer. I do. Okay. So the final answer is 131 over 140 units of work done. Now let me take you through the last thing. So a recap, we have a scalar, then we have a vector line integral. For a scalar, the parameterized curve is defined as the norm. You know the t is the same as prime. For vector, the parameterized is given as just its derivative. So we have the scalar multiplying the norm we have the vector field dotting this dt dt you've noticed this difference um one other thing under scalar is that this functional value can be in a differential form what is differential form it means that f is giving us some um, f1 dx f2 dy you have this as some representations of your function they are not vector fields they are just a scalar functions in a differential form so in that case how do you find the work done in this differential form so that's what we need to take you through so I have an example here. So let me take one example. Assuming I have the function giving us x, y, dy minus y squared dy. This function is a differential form and this is scalar. It is not a vector vectors would have been x y i minus y squared j or x y in the right angle left angle so it is not a vector it's a differential form i can have the curve in a parameterized form as let's take it as t and then 3t And then let's take an interval 
yt is between 0 and 2. So it means the work done on this curve will be given as 0 to 2. You know it's going to always be f at rt. But because the differential form, I'm going to have it as let me just take my time and do the substitution here. This x, y should be in the parameterized form. x is t, y is 3t. I'm going to get t times 3t dx. dx means differentiate x. I hope this is not complicated to do. dx means differentiate x. If I differentiate x, I'm going to get 1. 1 dt. Okay minus y squared is going to be 3t all squared if i differentiate y dy is going to give me 3 dt let me take my time here x y x is giving us t y is giving us 3t so if i want x y is going to be 3t squared if i want negative y squared it's going to give me um 9t squared now the x in the equation is going to be the small change in t so it's like t prime which is one in an implicit form becomes one dt if i want the y in an implicit form it's going to be three dt and that is the substitutions i have made here so if i simplify this i'm going to get three t squared dt minus the same integral 9 9 times 3 27 t squared dt oh sorry for this minus 27 dt you know this is the same as 0 to 3 there's going to be negative 24 t squared dt and you can simply evaluate this integral um, you should get the answer as negative 64. So these are the various um, forms of the scalar and then the vector fields. Now let's look at some properties of line integral. If I have, let me move to the next sheet. Properties of line integral. If I have a scalar multiplying the line integral, is the same as the scalar out and then the work done. If I have a, um, the line over two different functions, it is the same as splitting these functions over the curves. If I have the inverse or the reverse of a curve, it is the same as the negation of the integral over that curve. Lastly, if I have two points of a curve over a simple function, you can split this up into the two curves. These are properties to, um, to help you evaluate line integrals. Don't forget we have a scalar line integral and then a vector line integral. Scalars mean scalar function. This can, function can also be in a differential form. Please kindly take time and go over these videos and then look at more of some PDF that have these topics to treat and you understand all they are doing. Um, thank you and then I'll, I'll take the next video on independence and line curves.